Hello friends, it's Kayla. I'm so excited to bring you a book haul today. I've accumulated about 35 things in the last six weeks, so let's get right into it. Publishers have been dropping things into my mailbox like nobody's business the last couple weeks. So I'm gonna get into this stack first. So the first one was from Hatchet Canada. Um, this is How to Be Eaten by Maria Edelman. And this is like a horror fairy tale where it's about a support group for classic fairy tale characters as like modern women. So we've got, you know, Red Riding Hood. I don't know exactly who we're referencing in here actually. We have a girl who um, was once devoured by a wolf who now wears him as a coat. Uh, we have Gretel who questions her memory of being held captive. Then we have Ashley, the winner of a bacheloresque dating show, wondering if she really got her promised fairy tale ending. And Raina's love story will shock them all. I don't know. It's just going to be about like them coming together, but also there's going to be some mysterious things going on. Like why are they really all there? Who brought them together? I think that's going to be so fun. And then naturally a couple strange things from Tor. So this one's called Just Like Mother by Anne Helsel. And this is about a woman who escaped a cult. Now she's like living her perfect life in New York City, but her cousin brings her to like her resort in the Catskill Mountains and she's confronted with like childhood memories or the people at the resort want something from her because she works in fertility but she doesn't have any kids and everyone's like maybe you should or something like that. We also have What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, one of my most anticipated reads of the year. Um, this is a retelling or inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. So it says it features a genderqueer protagonist, their trusty horse, and a dark manor full of mysteries that will have you asking what moves the dead. So they're going to this manor and they're finding like strange voices at night and um, there's like possessed wildlife around the manor and they just need to figure out what the secrets of the House of Usher are before it consumes them all. Next, I have another anticipated read. Um, this is a short story collection called Dark Stars. It's all horror stories. Yes, I recently made a video series where I talk about all the books that I own. I have a lot of anthologies, quite a few horror anthologies. But what's one more? This is 12 Dark Tales. And we have authors like Stephen Graham Jones. I feel like Josh Mallerman is in here and a bunch of authors I've never read from. So it is going to encounter terrible monsters, both human and supernatural. It was created as an homage to the 1980 classic horror anthology, Dark Forces. Okay, excited, excited. Then somebody sent me An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. I have read this, I reviewed it. It's in my wrap up. Um, this is about a woman who also escaped a cult. Uh, a lot of the book is told f from her teenage years. And then half the book and the mystery itself, it takes place when she gets invited on this trip to Vegas with a bunch of new girlfriends and her past comes back to haunt her as it does. And um, yeah, some things happen within her friendship group. She doesn't trust everyone. Bad things are happening to people. That's the vibe. Next up, I was sent Witchlings by Scholastic. Um, this is by Clarabel A. Ortega, and it's about witches. And there's like, you're a witchling before you get to be an official witch in a coven. But once you get like sorted into your coven, some people don't get chosen and they're spares. And our main character becomes a spare. And she wants to create like her own coven, but as she is doing that it fails and to like prove their worth these little witches have to like defeat this beast and I think it sounds really fun another witchy one arrived this is called wild is the witch by Rachel Griffin I love the nature of witches last year so they kindly source books fire send me this one and it comes out this summer and it's about a girl who works for like a wildlife rehabilitation in Washington, but she's also secretly a witch. And there's a boy and they have to go on this like journey together to save this owl. Mm -hmm. Little does he know, the owl 
is carrying this curse that could kill this boy that she thought she hated but i think they're gonna fall in love and if they don't save the owl the curse is going to be unleashed on everybody doesn't that sound fun then i was sent the change by kirsten miller which i'm just so excited to read because i feel like i have checked out a lot of ya books in this vein where there's like a group of friends there's um magic like they're just finding out they have magic there's an island setting um it's like about empowerment and there's a revenge plot but it's also like a little fun and i just don't think there are many adult books on my radar like that that don't get too serious or too epic fantasy um and i hope i'm like figuring out the tone of this properly but we end up having a trio of women who they discover um, a dead teenage girl on this island. But they refuse to accept that that's what happened. They think there's more to it, so they're going to come together to f solve the mystery. But they're also all discovering that they have these gifts. So one of them can like hear calls of the dead. Um, one of them has undergone a mysterious metamorphosis. One of them realizes she has the ability to channel her hot flashes as she's going through menopause. It just sounds like the perfect mix of like speculative crime and I'm so excited. This one, I can't really pin down the tone of it. Um, it's called The Women Could Fly. It's by Megan Giddings who wrote Lakewood. I really enjoyed last year. And this seems to be um, speculative as well. Like women, um, well, specifically black women are finding themselves on trial for witchcraft. And it also seems to be a story of a woman just like connecting to her mother um her mother's missing has been missing for like half of josephine's life um and they're also living in a time where like if you're past the age of 30 and you don't have children or a husband you have to um sign on to this program to be monitored by like society the government i don't know and so she wants to take charge of her own life and also i'm sure that's related to like why her mother is gone this is also out in summer and I think it'll be an interesting time. Moving on to books that I purchased myself. I think I'll go through ones that I purchased with a purpose. Like I have a specific plan, video plan uh, to read this in. So this stack is the smaller stack. And then I have a real big stack of ones that I don't know what I'm going to read. So naturally I have another rabbit book. Uh, this is called Wow No Thank You. This has been recommended to me as a good nonfiction to read in my rabbit vlog that is to come in summer it's by samantha irby and apparently it's very funny and it's essays just about her life and her experience that's her um i don't often pick up humorous books on purpose especially nonfiction. but i'm i want to see i want to see if i can get into it next i grabbed once there were wolves by charlotte mcconaughey i have had this on my radar for a while and i was waiting until this edition was published because i think it's very pretty uh this is the author of migrations which i loved earlier this year and it similarly is about like the outdoors and women um, biologists and like a connection with or like a storyline related to animals so there's a group of gray whales that whales there's a group of gray wolves who this team of biologists is like saving or reintroducing into the wild or something like that and they end up really thriving unexpectedly so she feels a real protective nature over them but then somebody dies and the wolves are being blamed and she must i don't know prove their innocence or protect them but she's also falling in love but also maybe that guy that she's falling in love with is responsible for the murder who knows next up we have a stack of mysteries this one is a very strong romance theme um but it's dial a for aunties by jesse q sutanto and this is about a woman who works for her family's like wedding company like one of them does the entertainment one of them does the cakes she does the photography and she gets set up on a blind date and he ends up dying and then the aunties come together to cover it up and hijinks ensue. Then we have a deadly inside scoop. Likewise, you know, a mid 20s woman working for her family business. This one's an ice cream shop. And then she finds a dead man and her father's gonna be implicated for the crime unless she solves it herself. 
Another food related one is arsenic and adobo, which is about a mid twenties woman working for her family restaurant and she serves somebody food. I think it's an ex-boyfriend. He's a food critic and then he dies and she's going to be blamed for the murder unless she solves it. Young sleuths at work. That's the vibe. Next up is under Lock and Skeleton Key by Gigi Pandian. And this is about a woman working for her family's business. They install like cool house renovations features like hidden staircases and moving bookshelves. Um, but one day she goes to work on a project and she finds somebody dead in the house who looks just like her. And so she thinks somebody meant to kill her. And so she needs to figure out who that is so she doesn't die. Then here's my stack of books that I just bought. Uh, don't know when I'm going to read them, you guys. <laughs> Some of these were pre-orders. So like last year, I bought all of these and they arrived. This one is called What We Harvest. Um, it's by Anne Phrase Tat, And it's really just the cover and the idea of like, weird evil magical nature that's what i want in a story so we're in a small town and something is consuming the crops it's called the blight and it's killing people it's killing livestock it's killing everything and now i don't know in order to survive we've got a girl connecting with her ex-boyfriend they have to work together to figure out what the blight is save the town who knows Next up, I have An Arrow to the Moon by Emily XR Pan. Love the astonishing color of after. And this one has such a vague synopsis. Um, even though it's long, it's just like, there's a girl who has a lot of expectations on her. There's a boy who's sick of being haunted by his family mistakes. And they come together to find out the mystery of the moon. What? <laughs> They're navigating their family secrets. Everything's falling apart um all they can depend on is their love it says it's romeo and juliet meets chinese mythology i think i pre-ordered this before it even had a synopsis like i needed another emily xr pan and we'll see how it goes then we've got in a garden burning gold by rory power which is stunning and it's getting awful reviews so i'm excited to read this i don't have it planned for a specific video but i do plan to actually hold up i can make this fit for a video okay i'm gonna make this work for a video um in june july okay keep an eye out for that exciting so this is about uh twins a brother and sister one of them controls the seasons one of them maintains the country borders um their father something is happening his reign over everything they're questioning you know how he's running things and then other people from other places are trying to come as it happens with royalty and take you know the power and the crown and the twins must take matters into their own hands and keep the world from crashing down around them yeah next up i grabbed a little novella that i didn't even know existed until i saw it on the indigo website it's called Dusk or Dawn or Dawn or Day. It's by Sean and McGuire. It's not related to any other like series, I don't think. And it also doesn't really have a synopsis. There's a couple lines here that don't really make sense, but I think it's implying that our main character is a ghost. And the blurb says it's a love letter to New York. Spooky, atmospheric, no idea. Even though this isn't tied to a video, it's very short. So I'm sure I will read it sooner than later. Next up, I have Winter Counts by uh, David Heska Wanbly Wyden. And this is crime fiction. Our main character is the local enforcer on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota. Um, and he's responsible for doling out um, punishments for things that the American legal system or the tribal council has failed to do. So he takes matters into his own hands. Then drugs come into the reservation, they're affecting his family. And so he is on the hunt with his ex-girlfriend, 
Oh, just his ex-girlfriend. Why did I think this was gonna be like a buddy? Like, why did I think his dog was gonna be mentioned in the synopsis? Kim, his ex-girlfriend and their dog. No, he gets the help from his ex-girlfriend to track down this drug cartel. While at the same time, it raises uncomfortable questions about money and power. So I've actually had that recommended to me a lot. Next up is Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese, which I'm not gonna pitch to you because I just recently pitched it to you in a different video going through all my TBR. Um, but I, I just replaced that copy that I owned with this copy because I think it's stunning. It is the, I thought maybe it was an anniversary copy, but I think it might just be when it um, became a movie. This was the new cover. Next up, I grabbed Slewfoot. I really just saw this mentioned in an Instagram post and I ordered it. And then since then I've seen like three of my booktube friends, people I'm subscribed to reading it. And so for some reason I thought it was like a brand new release, but it's not. So that's very strange that it all happened. Well, it's from 2021. So new-ish, but like literally this week I saw everyone reading it. It's by Brom and it has paintings by the author that are absolutely horrifying and beautiful. And it's about like this demon entity devil in the woods. It's set in 1666 and the colonists call him Slewfoot. But um, to the people who live in the woods, they call him father. Our main character is Abatha. She's recently widowed and there's a battle that ignites between pagan and puritan apparently there's some really interesting commentary in here and i just love this like it's just a weird size it reminds me of um a monster calls and yeah horror folklore fairy tale vibes apparently that's what i'm into and by into i mean not actually having read anything but picking them up frequently. This one is Friends Like These by Kimberly McCrate. I recently did a three times a charm video where I read authors for the third time. One of them is Kimberly McCrate, and so I immediately picked up this one. I always thought that this was a YA. I'm not sure why. Um, it's not. It's a literary thriller. It takes place in the Catskills with a couple different couples, and something happened to one of the people in the friend group like a long time ago and now they're like coming back together. It's a reunion, as it were, at a glamorous weekend home. And it's going to be marked by lies, betrayal, and murder. That's all I wanna know. I never wanna read the entire synopsis of a thriller. Actually, this one I also have planned for a video, perhaps. So this is called Luster, it's by Raven Lalani. And this sounds like a weird story about uh, a polyamorous relationship. Our main character, Edie, who gets involved with this man, and then he invites her into his marriage, but they also have a daughter. And she's now, I don't know, responsible for her, or there's some type of connection there. And it's also about art and believing your own talents. I have no idea what I'm gonna get myself into with this one, but that should be in the next couple months as well. Speaking of strange things, we've got Devil House by John Darnielle, which if you watched my birthday vlog, you saw me purchase this blindfolded in the bookstore. This is a pretty new release and I was gonna wait until more people read it and reviewed it before knowing if I should pick it up, but I ended up just getting it anyway. Um, I really wanna read more haunted house stories this year. That is one of my major goals. It's funny how every time I mention like this book or Wolf in White Van, people like will comment like, oh, you should check out the mountain goats or like, did you know actually that book's by the guy who in the mountain goats? So let me preface, I am aware this author is also a musician. In fact, the mountain goats is one of my favorite bands. <laughs> and like my husband and I, our song is a mountain goat song. I, I DNF'd Wolf in My Van multiple times. Can't remember if I ever finished it. Um, just wasn't sure about this one, but I own it, so. It says it's a gripping novel about murder, truth, and the dangers of storytelling. So there's this man who goes to stay in this spooky manor. A bunch of murders occurred there, and I think it's him like trying to figure out the crime. Apparently it's very ambitious, so I'm sure there's like gonna be some full circle moments about him and his art and his past and the small town and the crimes and like some weird 
vibes. That's what I'm expecting. Next up, I have the Between by Tana Reeve Dew. I loved the Good House. It was last year or the year before. Um, and then this was recently republished. And this is about a man. It sounds like um, Final Destination vibes where like he almost died. And now there's he feels like there's this evil force following him and trying to rectify that. His wife is a judge and starts receiving racist hate mail. And so he wants to protect his family from like real life people, but also this like demonic entity following them. I think it's gonna be a good time. And then from the thrift store, I found Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, um, which is about children who spontaneously combust. And there's this friendship between these two women. One of them, they're her children. And when they like get angry or sad or feel a lot of emotions, like they catch on fire. And she is hiring her friend to like come be their nanny, I think, teach them to like control their emotions. And then lastly, I have a stack of books I already read. So hooray. Well, I just lied to you. <laughs> One of the books, it looked like a bigger stack than it was because two of them I haven't read, but like I have to haul these all together. Otherwise the universe will implode. Uh, this is the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. I pitched it in my wrap up. Please don't make me do it again. I, it's hard. <laughs> it's about climate and earth and people and, and things happening to the earth, bad things <laughs> and people who have powers who can like feel the earth quakes, earth shakes and prevent them. Um, following lots of different, you know, situations and perspectives as people who have these powers get more in tune with them, essentially. And then these are the sequels. This one is The Obelisk Gate, and this one is The Stone Sky. All major award-winning books. N.K. Jemisin is iconic, and I will be continuing in the series in june let's say june okay then i have they by k dick which is this weird um book from the 70s that like didn't get much attention then um but was recently republished and it has a little intro by carmen maria machado uh, about how this author's work was being really stifled in her time she um was a queer author writing about society and control and conformity and this group of individuals fighting against that and their right to be artists and thinkers and um, themselves. Yeah, it was strange. <laughs> then I have Lake Lore by Anna Marie McLemore, which is about this underwater strange world that these two individuals um, have a connection to and they have a connection to each other. They're teens, they are experiencing you know, difficult things and this underwater situation brings them together, but also the world is starting to like be mixed with this underwater dangerous situation and they need to like save their like own secrets from being revealed. I also read that in my wrap up. If you want to watch I recently read Alone Out Here. I did a vlog where I read a bunch of sci-fi. Um, so Alone Out Here by Riley Redgate is Lord of the Flies in Space. There's a group of teens who are all fighting for like control on this spacecraft. Just about all of their dynamics on the ship and them learning how to like fly the ship, them learning about what exists on the ship because they took off before they were really supposed to and so some things are not finished. They don't have people knowledgeable about all the things and they have to create their own, you know, society and government. And then I also read Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, which is a series of short stories um, from across space and time. Some of them come back. So unlike How Have We Go in the Dark, which I'm about to talk about in a second, by Sequoia Nagamatsu. It's just, these are so similar. I feel like I have to talk about them in tandem now. But this is a series of stories, space and time, um, that are all individual short stories. They are all tied together, but you only visit you know, one character at a time. In Sea of Tranquility, it's similar. There is something tying them together, um, but occasionally there are ones that we 
come back to but there are ones that we only visit like once they're both really plague pandemic focused as well this one we have like a man in 1912 just coming to vancouver island from england and starting his like farmer life there's a hotel detective investigating something strange happening in the wilderness there's a woman on a book tour who lives on like a moon colony it's like kind of about time travel but it's more about humanity and loneliness and love as is this it's about a pandemic how it affects people um, how they navigate their existence knowing that they're about to die or their family members have just died or their small children they know are about to die. It's about people trying to save humanity and about people just trying to cope with the end of it. And they're both, those are both such good books. As is the next one. I've got Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan, which is the first in a duology. Um, this is about a woman, it's Chinese mythology and the celestial kingdom. Her mother is the moon goddess. She's been exiled to the moon because she took the elixir of immortality and now her daughter um is going to like she's hiding her identity and also trying to find a way to get her mother out of exile and along the way she is involved in like royalty and the army and she's falling in love with multiple people and it was so wonderful watch my review i'm not gonna tell you it here just kidding i already did and then i guess we're ending on a book i didn't really love the resting place by camilla Steen. This is the story of a woman who's, is it her aunt? No, her grandmother is murdered. She witnessed the crime, but she has face blindness, so she doesn't know who actually committed the crime. And then she goes to stay in the manor that she never even knew existed, that her grandmother left her with her husband and her aunt. They go there along with, I think he's like a lawyer guy who is helping them figure out all the estate and like, I don't even remember why they're all staying there for so long but weird things start to happen and she knows that there is a killer on the loose who killed her grandmother and so she our main character is worried that she's being followed and then they encounter some strange things on the property um it's like a literary suspense is what i would call it so that's it those are all the things that i brought into my life in the last six weeks. I would love to know if you're planning on reading any of these or which ones you're most excited for me to get to. Like I said, I do have videos planned for some of them, but if there's one that didn't have a video associated and you really want me to prioritize it, let me know. I can't promise anything, but like I'll read your comment and I will nod along. <laughs> I will appreciate you engaging with my video. Thank you so much for being here regardless if you comment or not. I know so many of you are silent watchers, but if you wanna leave me a little emoji, so I know you're here, maybe a moon. I bought a lot of moon stuff. So anyway, see you later, bye.